Okay, so let me preface this video by saying that you're going to see a lot of things you won't understand at first, but hopefully after your first year, it will all make sense in the end. All right, roll the video. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I have just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in first year engineering, two of those courses were AppSci 100 and AppSci 101. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything that I wish I knew before I took these courses and some survival tips to help you get through them. And believe me, there's a lot of things that I wish I knew before taking AppSci 100 and 101. First, what is AppSci 100 and 101 all about? In both of these courses, you'll get an introduction to engineering by doing engineering. Through some design projects and case studies, you will learn to solve problems and think like an engineer. Throughout the year, you'll develop skills such as communication within teams, idea generation, and presenting your designs in different ways. In each course, you'll be randomly assigned to a group of five to six people that you'll work with for the duration of the term. Now that I've basically just read the first paragraph of the syllabus, here's how AppSci 100 and 101 are structured for each week and the content that will be covered in each course. In both courses, the course structure is exactly the same and follows this pattern depicted on screen. Before the week begins on Monday, you will be learning the main course content through online screencasts, which are short videos that explain the concepts that will be used in your engineering projects. You will usually have on average around two to four screencasts to watch in any given week, ranging from five to 20 minutes long. After watching these screencasts, you'll have a short quiz afterwards to test your understanding. These screencast quizzes must be completed before Monday's class. Speaking of Monday's class, or referred to in the syllabus as Class A, this is your first lecture of the week, which will begin with a team quiz. These team quizzes are multiple choice and are usually around six questions long. As the name suggests, these quizzes are done in your teams which means that you can discuss each question with your group members. Each question only shows on screen for about 90 seconds or so, and you record your answer on scratch cards that reveal a star if you selected the correct answer. After doing the team quiz, the rest of the class is lecture-based with some activities and discussions. Sometime during the week, you will have a two hour long studio session, which is a period where you'll work on the current project or case study with your team. These studio sessions are also where you'll be presenting or showcasing your designs or solutions. For each studio session, there is a worksheet that must be completed and submitted no later than 24 hours after the studio session has ended. These worksheets are meant to help you track your group's progress within the project and understand the content. The second class of the week is held on Friday, which is lecture-based with more activities and discussions expanding on the concepts taught on Monday. In AppSci 100, the last 10 to 15 minutes of class will be dedicated to a short presentation from one of the engineering programs each week. These short presentations will give you an idea about what program you'd like to apply to for second year placement. And that is what your week will look like in AppSci 100 and 101. Now we're going to talk about what you're actually going to do in AppSci 100 and AppSci 101. Both of these courses are divided into three main modules that each have a project or case study that focuses on a specific engineering concept. In module one of AppSci 100, you'll be introduced to the engineering design process with the cardboard chair project, where you guessed it, you will build a chair completely out of cardboard. In this module, you'll be evaluated on your cardboard chair based on its assembly time, how much weight it can hold, and its aesthetics. Additionally, for this project, you'll be making a poster and a video pitch to showcase your cardboard chair. If you'd like a sample of what my group's chair and video pitch look like, it is linked right in the cards up there. 
In module two of AppSci 100, you'll focus on building decision-making skills by choosing where the next bike lane should be implemented in the city of Vancouver. Of the bike lane options that you will be given, you'll need to consider many aspects in your decision-making process, such as the stakeholders involved, the cost, and the sustainability. Once your group has decided on the best bike lane option, you'll be graded on a formal business presentation that outlines your recommendation. In module three of AppSci 100, the main focus will be on developing your CAD and prototyping skills by designing an adaptive device. Adaptive devices help people interact with things in their daily lives that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to. For this project specifically, your adaptive device will be for a client with limited hand and arm mobility. You will choose one of three tasks that are challenging for this client to perform and then design an adaptive device that will address this problem. In this module, you'll be doing a mix of physical and virtual prototyping to explore different ways that your adaptive device could work. The main deliverables for this project are a formal tech memo describing your design process for your adaptive device and a promotion sheet that showcases your adaptive device. And lastly for AppSide 100 is the unofficial module four, which basically it's just sprinkles in concepts about engineering professionalism and ethics throughout the whole term. Upside 101 begins with module 5, which focuses on building technical design skills in the form of building a fully autonomous claw that can pick up a variety of objects. You'll be given an Arduino kit, sheet metal, and access to hand tools during your studio sessions to construct and program your autonomous claw. Once your claw has been built, it will be assessed based on the variety of objects it can pick up and its precision in picking up and dropping off objects. To present your claw design, you will be making an e-poster to document your design process, which will basically just be an automated slideshow presentation. In module six of AppSci 101, you'll be delving deeper into the concept of sustainability by recommending a water treatment system for a small community that is experiencing water shortages. The main deliverables for this project include an expression of interest document or EOI that recommends your proposal to a local government or a provincial government and an oral business presentation of your recommendation. In your decision making, your group will need to consider things like the environmental impacts of your solution, societal impacts, economic viability, geopolitical context, and stakeholder engagement. And lastly, in module 7 of AppSci 101, you'll be using all of the engineering knowledge that you've accumulated thus far to design a rainwater harvesting system using spreadsheets to virtualize your system. A great oversimplification of how this project works is that you'll be given a long document outlining all of the components that you can use for your rainwater harvesting system and the associated parameters for each component. You also have a document of requirements that your system must satisfy. Using this information along with spreadsheets, you will create a simulation that will be tested with 10 years of weather data. Depending on which components you choose for your system, it will attain a certain satisfaction rating, which is part of what you'll be graded on. But the bigger part of what you'll be graded on is a narrated e-poster that will summarize your design and how you came to your final component selection. I will say that this project is probably the most difficult one out of all of the projects done in first year, both in terms of actually going about doing it and coordinating the task with your team. And I will admit that I had no idea what was going on for a majority of this module. In terms of course grading for AppSci 100 and 101, here's the breakdown of what you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. 
First, we've got the individual screencast quizzes completed each week, and those are weighted at 10% of your final grade. Team quizzes are weighted at 5%, studio worksheets are weighted at another 5%, and other individual miscellaneous assignments are weighted at another 5%. Your project deliverables, which are the big things in your project that you'll be graded on, are weighted at 30% in total, with 10% weightings tied to each of the three modules in each term. In terms of exams, there is one in-class midterm exam worth 15% of your final grade and a final exam worth 30%. AppSci 100 and 101 are pass the exam to pass the course courses, meaning that you have to have at least a 50% weighted average from both of the exams to pass the course. Both the midterm and the final are formatted in the exact same way a multiple choice exam that is done on your computer. You will need to download the lockdown browser application in order to, well, lock down your computer so that you don't cheat on the exam. Without going too deep into the actual content that will be on the exams, because frankly, I have no idea what's gonna be on next year's exam, I will say that the question types can either have one correct answer, a known number of correct answers, like three correct answers, or an unknown number of correct answers, which is like select all that apply. Everyone gets a random assortment of questions of varying difficulty. I won't guarantee that this will happen in the future, but for my exams, each exam was scaled up depending on which assortment of questions you got. The scaling usually boosts you up between 2 to 20% depending on the difficulty of questions that you got, and no one ever got scaled down. Prior to the exams, there will be practice exams and practice quizzes posted with questions similar to that of the exam. I would suggest doing one or two of these practice exams first, figuring out what you need to study more based on what you got wrong, reviewing these concepts, and then attempting another practice exam. Granted, this strategy is coming from someone who didn't really do well on their exams, so please take my advice with a grain of salt. Oh man, that was a lot of course information all at once, so let's end this video off by giving you some survival tips and advice to help you get through AppSci 100 and 101. First things first, these are two classes that you don't really have to take many notes for because they pretty much give you all of the information that you need on the Canvas page. For each module, the AppSci team posts skeleton notes, which are pretty much just slightly watered down versions of the lecture slides for you to annotate and reference during the lectures, but it's completely optional to do that. Second, do your best to bond with or at least get along with your team members. They're directly and indirectly responsible for your mark and your experience in the course, so try your best to foster a good team environment. And lastly, do your best to stay on task with your group, but also just expect to be doing everything on the night before it's due. Even though your group may be trying their best to finish the project in a timely manner, it always seems to happen that everything ends up getting done the night before the presentation or the morning of. So my advice is to plan ahead, but also just expect the worst case scenario. Oh, and there is a textbook that can be purchased for AppSci 100 and 101. I personally didn't get it myself, but a couple of my friends did get it and said that they understood the concept slightly better. I'm not sure if it was just correlation because they were smarter than me or if it was causation, but I just wanted to put it out there. And that's about it for everything you need to know before going into AppSci 100 and AppSci 101. I really, really hope this video can just help one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future because I'll feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that my next video will be about Math 100 and Math 101. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.